Drug-induced hyperkalemia is a disorder we see in the outpatient setting as well as in the hospital. Um, and we see this because we're using drugs that either impair the ability of potassium to move from the extracellular space into cells or drugs that impair the ability of the kidney to secrete potassium. And there are a number of classes of drugs that do this. Aldosterone has a very important role in enhancing renal potassium secretion. And by blocking aldosterone's effects, we limit the ability of the kidney to secrete potassium. So administering drugs that prevent aldosterone secretion by preventing generation of angiotensin II or signaling of angiotensin II by angiotensin II receptor antagonists or by angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors will decrease the ability of the kidney to secrete potassium. Aldosterone antagonists also decrease the ability of the kidney to secrete potassium. When these drugs are used individually for the treatment of hypertension, the risk of hyperkalemia is actually very low. But as we start using these drugs in individuals who may have an impaired ability to secrete potassium, such as individuals with renal insufficiency, uh, individuals with uh, hyporenin hypoaldosteronism, individuals with heart failure, we start to see an increased risk of hy drug-induced hyperkalemia. These drugs are not only used individually, but they're also used in combination, particularly in individuals with glomerular disorders or individuals with heart failure. We're now seeing angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors or angiotensin II receptor blockers used in combination with aldosterone antagonists. And those individuals are at significantly increased risk for developing hyperkalemia. There's another class of drugs that impair renal potassium secretion, and these are drugs that directly block the sodium channel and the distal nephron. We know that sodium uptake through the sodium channel and the distal nephron is required to secrete potassium in the distal nephron. So by blocking the sodium channel, you block renal K secretion. It's important to be aware of this disorder and to monitor serum potassium concentrations. And when serum potassium concentrations start to rise to a level uh, where you need to intervene, it's important to intervene.